Over the next few minutes, you're going to learn what to do when you have a conversation with your 10 year old about something sensitive and they tell you they didn't like it at all. And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car with you each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And uh, this week's question is um, from a mum who started a conversation and had quite a long conversation with a 10 year old about masturbation and at the end of it that 10 year old said I did not like having that conversation probably not in as few words as those but the um, the message was clear right so the answer to this week's question comes from the courage pillar inside the evolved family method you know that the evolved family method is the method that um, I've created to help hundreds of families to start talking more comfortably about sensitive things in a way that nurtures connection that their children feel with them. So the Courage Pillar contains 16 strategies to help build and nurture deeper connection with growing children um, by talking about sensitive stuff. So it's not about trying to do sensitive stuff in the best possible way, though of course it is about that. It's far more about using those conversations for more than one purpose. We're not just here to educate our child, we're here to maintain and nurture the connection that they have with us. So there are 16 strategies to do that inside the Courage Pillar. Um, I'm going to share with you my favorites now because we don't have enough time to go through the whole lot. Um, we take nine weeks inside the Evolve School to teach all those strategies in detail. So um, what you may do when you have a question like this or an experience like this, you have a 10 year old, you've managed to have what you thought was a really progressive, important conversation about something sensitive like masturbation in this case. And they have told you in no uncertain terms that they did not like that conversation. So what you might do is need to reach out for help, just like this, this parent reached out for help because it's really interesting, isn't it? On the face of it, um, if you have heard sex educators talk um, about conversations related to bodies, sex, babies, pleasure, genitals, periods, puberty, all that stuff, you'll know that pretty much every sex educator um, will say the earlier we start talking about these things and the more often we talk about them, the better off it is for us and for our child. And yet here this parent has done what she thought was right and has come up against this difficulty with her child. So it makes sense why this situation is happening because um, the advice is to speak up and talk often. And um, why wouldn't we do that about topics of conversation that we think are important? Because at the end of the day, if you're anything like me, you probably have memories of um, something happening in your life because you didn't have accurate information or you didn't have enough understanding of how your body worked. So when I was 28, I think I was 28, when I finally started to have regular orgasms with a partner, it took me that long um, to work out how my body worked around things to do with sex and pleasure. And maybe you have a similar story like that. Maybe this parent had a similar story to that. And that's why we come to our parenting relationship with our kid so sure that information is important. And so when we have an experience like this, it's like, oh, what do we do now? So I've learned that when a parent gives a child information like this, probably because of a memory or an experience they've had in the past, and this parent doesn't also have the connection skills to go along with the information giving skills, um, that is a sign that the courageous tongue-tied parenting effect is in full swing. This effect is that we know where we want to go, we know how we want to support our child, but our skills or our experiences are not in line with what we hope for in the conversations in our family. And this courageous tongue-tied parenting effect um, can cause you to be wondering um, why your kid is reacting in this way and you're probably like reaching and groping around for a solution. You might be feeling confused and unsure about how to make sure your kid gets the information that they need, but at the same time avoids this experience of 
them feeling awkward or them not liking a conversation that you've started. And all that makes absolute sense. We all want um, our child to be able to benefit from the experiences, the negative experiences maybe we've had and the learning that we've got from that. So um, you haven't done anything wrong by getting to this point in your parenting. Uh, you've followed your gut and done your best to create situations for your child that means they avoid the difficult stuff that you had to go through. So in this episode, I'm gonna go through what to do if you've had a conversation with a 10 year old about something sensitive, particularly in this instance, we're gonna talk about um, a conversation about masturbation um, and um, how you can make those go a bit smoother in the future. Step one, notice where binary thinking is keeping you stuck. Binary thinking is where it's either or. So it's either this or it's that. So in this case, um, the conversation that you did is either right or it's wrong. Um, or our child is right and the child is wrong. We're gonna step away from that binary thinking of right and wrong. And we're gonna move into a place of thinking about how two truths or two things can be equally true at the same time. So the conversation can have been helpful to our child, but also our child's awkwardness needs attention. Or um, our child does need this information about masturbation, and equally they have a right to be comfortable and feel like they're not being given information uh, in a way that's embarrassing or upsetting. So we need to if at all possible, realize that sometimes in our parenting, if we're focused very much on the information, it can sort of railroad almost over our child's needs, which are equally as important. So if you were listening to a podcast that wasn't about connection and talking about sensitive things, then um, we wouldn't be talking about the connection piece. But this is a connection podcast. We are all in the business of ensuring that our child feels like they can come and talk to us about absolutely anything at all and feel like um, their connection with us is strong. Um, we all want, I would like to think, to nurture that connection that we have built from when our child is very young because as they get older, you know, their needs change. Um, and that really brings me into point two, because when our kids get closer to puberty, they go through this thing called the squick factor. You might have heard me talk about this before. Um, the squick factor is a developmentally appropriate point in our child's life where they start just getting completely squicked out, like getting the ooze or the yucks about conversations to do with sensitive things. It starts, can start between seven, eight, nine, around that age. So a 10 year old absolutely is well and truly embedded into the squick factor. So what that means is they are more likely to respond with a, oh, I didn't like that conversation than with a, oh, that's super interesting. Tell me more about a conversation, particularly about masturbation, because it's about private stuff and pleasure. And um, it makes sense that they would maybe not be so wild about having a conversation with us about that. So essentially when we think about the squick factor kicking in at seven, eight or nine, um, and this next point will be relevant to those of you who have younger children, um, this is why the squick factor is one of the main reasons why um, it, sex educators recommend that we have conversations with children earlier when they're younger. And we don't wait till just around puberty when the squick factor is in full tilt. So there could have been opportunities maybe to talk about not necessarily the word masturbation, though that's okay to say to young children as well, but also this idea of that our body is designed to feel good. That's part of its job. And what are all some of the ways that we can feel good in our body? Like what gives our body pleasure? There can be all sorts of things. You might have... Um, heard me talk about jumping on the trampoline can feel really good for some kids. It just makes their body sing. Um, other children might choose, yeah, actually having a piece of chocolate, putting it in my mouth and, and sucking it so the flavor like coats all my tongue feels really good. And so we're not, we don't have to just focus on sexual pleasure. In fact, 
we definitely don't focus on sexual pleasure. We look at the body and our child as a human, first of all. And when we have um, laid the groundwork for all sorts of pleasure, including the fact that different parts of our body feel better to touch than others, right? And not assuming it's always genitals now because we're all, we're all different, right? So if we have created conversations where different people enjoy touching different parts of their body, then it's a very simple next step to move into a, yeah, and some people um, touch their genitals because that makes them feel really nice. And you can absolutely talk about masturbation then. Point three. So we've talked about the fact that um, we're not thinking in binaries, things aren't right or wrong. And we've also talked about the fact that when the squick factor happens, our kid is way more likely to feel uncomfortable if we're having a conversation about something sensitive. The third point then is, well, what do we do if our child is already in squick factor and we haven't had a conversation about pleasure? Well, um, inside the Evolve School, we have a system called the Family Meeting Agenda. And it gives you, I think it's seven steps to go through to come into a collaborative, a collaborative conversation about something that um, you know your child needs to understand, right? So it's absolutely not about sort of us being the adult and saying, we know this conversation needs to happen and having it. It's far more about coming to our child and saying, look, I've messed up. You could even say, I've messed up because I realized we have not had any conversations about, and then insert the topic, it could be pleasure, um, and uh, conversations about pleasure help keep kids safe. So um, the other thing I know is that kids can also feel awkward about this. So um, you and I need to get together and have a chat about some of the ways that you might feel comfortable getting this information that is going to help you in a way that doesn't make you feel awkward and embarrassed. So you see how that's a collaboration. That's a collaborative culture. We're coming to our child not with all the answers, but absolutely um, presenting them with a problem that we have and um, respecting their ability to come up with um, solutions because we are giving them the autonomy of um, knowing themselves, right? Our kids are getting to be the expert of who they are. They're getting older now. And that's a big transition in parenting, isn't it? Like, um, it's one of the reasons why around that age is the time when parents will reach out to help with this for this sort of thing because... Um, or everything that worked before in the past when their kids were younger isn't working so much anymore. And also we might get that feeling of our child pulling away from us, that sense of them not being as willing to listen to us as they were in the past. And that is normal. It doesn't mean it feels nice. And it does mean that we need to become way smarter about the conversations we have with our children and really um, use all our connection skills um, that are part of the courage pillar. Remember, this is part of the courage pillar and there are 16 different strategies inside that pillar to help us with our conversations about sensitive things with children around this age. So um, this is absolutely about creating a collaboration uh, with our child so that all everyone's needs are met. That's our need of giving our children information about what they what their body does or um, how their body can feel and our child's need which is to feel comfortable and safe when that conversation is happening. So in this episode um, you've learnt what to do when you've had a conversation with a 10 year old about something sensitive like masturbation or maybe it was porn or maybe it was erections who knows what it was um, and your kid didn't appreciate it or didn't um, feel comfortable while that conversation was going on. But it doesn't do you much good if you don't have the 16 uh, connection skills, uh, the full set of 16 connection skills. So if you would like to learn um, the whole of the Evolved Family Method that I teach inside the Evolved School, then um, click the link somewhere around this video and uh, put your details down there and I can do the rest of the work to make sure that you don't miss out the next time that school opens. And that's sitting in the car for another week. Uh, where I've answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. Bye for now. Start again. Third time lucky.
my goodness, a little flying fly. Oops. 